J is in amps per meter squared, and I is in units of amps. So if we're going to integrate J over the surface area, say a cross-sectional cut through the wire, then we could get I. So if we ever know J, we could take the surface integral of J, integrating it over DS. But J is a vector. It has a direction associated with it. So what we're interested in, in is uh, the J that is going through the surface S. So we need to take the dot product of this with N hat, where N hat points um, through, it's an outward normal unit vector pointing outward from surface S. So a normal vector from S. All right, so now if we apply the Biot-Savart law to this wire, uh, the magnetic field around it will only depend on the amount of current flowing through it. We already saw that. If we integrate H along D DL, we'll get the amount of current, which is also here equal to J dot n hat 1 S1. So this, we're taking a surface. The first surface we're going to consider is we're going to call S1. Here's n hat pointing straight downward. And DL circulates around. So there's no indication right now that this result would change, even if we have an AC current. We would still get the current flowing on the wire. The current would just be time changing now, it's a function of T. But what if we have a gap along the wire where no current is flowing that we can see, like the wire, like the current flowing in the wire? Like so like if we add a capacitor along the wire, in this case there are no electrons uh, physically moving between the two plates of the capacitor. That's assuming that we have uh, free space, so that's why I have up here this note about there's free space around the wire and between the two plates of the capacitor. So free space. So in this region between the two plates, J, is zero. So what if we were to now apply a bit of art law to our surface that goes in between these two plates? Like this. We have surface two. Oh, this is an N1. This should be an N2. Uh, going in between the two plates of the capacitor. Now, for S2, we would get zero, whereas up here we got I. So now we have an inconsistent result. Since the capacitor is in the same circuit as the section of wire above it, we know there must be current flowing through the capacitor, because we must have continuity of current. But this is not accounted for in our Biot-Savart result. So we have a clue now that something is missing in our equations. And this is where James Clerk Maxwell comes in. He's shown here. He dealt with this inconsistency by adding a new term, the displacement current term. He added it in 1861. So now, instead of just integrating the J current density, which we'll call conduction current, through the surface, in order to obtain the magnetic field around it, to get an accurate value for the magnetic field, we also have to integrate the displacement current flowing through that surface. The extra displacement current term fixes our inconsistency. So in this case, assuming free space between the two plates of the capacitor, the conduction current flowing in the wire right here, so I could put, sometimes you'll see a, a, a subscript C. If it's not there, you can assume it's conduction current. Uh, but this current, conduction current, must equal the displacement current with the subscript D between the plates of the capacitor. In other words, both conduction current resulting from the electrons flowing in the conductor or in a conductive material can generate magnetic fields and also displacement current resulting from time changing electric fields because D is equal to epsilon E can also generate magnetic fields. Now, what if we replace the free space which has a conductivity of zero 
meaning there are no free electrons available to migrate in free space. What if we take out that free space <laughs> or uh, just replace it with something? And instead add a material with a non-zero conductivity between the two plates of the capacitor. This would mean that there are now some free electrons available to migrate between the two plates of the capacitor. So how do you think this might change our answer on the right side of this equation over here? 